Welcome back to Desk Careers, everybody. I'm so excited to bring another amazing guest with us here today. We welcome Vlad Chernaev, who is the head of growth at Upgrade Digital to our Desk Careers Spotlight Series. Welcome, Vlad. It's great to have you with us today. Thank you, Maria. It's, it's great to have uh, this time with you and share my experiences with you know, either students or professionals. I would love to show the real uh, journey of entrepreneur. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, happy to be here. I love that you call it that, the real journey of an entrepreneur. And it makes me think about the visual of what people think an entrepreneur does, what an entrepreneur really does. So let's start right there. What is a typical day from you, right from the moment your eyes open to the moment that you shut your eyes and go to sleep at night? What's it like for you as a young entrepreneur? It's, it's a very good question. Uh, my mission, and I, I consider it's a very, very tough mission, is to show the real journey of an entrepreneur uh, to people that are starting out or to people that are already in that and struggling with businesses. Because I think the picture, as you mentioned correctly, the picture of the entrepreneur is like having luxury cars, yachts, you know, having 12 vacations a year and all of that, which is not true, which is not true. Uh, what I do every day, uh, it's almost the same. Uh, I wake up at around like 6 a.m. Uh, I make sure that I have a good breakfast. I do sports for about an hour and then I off to the office. So about 7, 7.30, I'm in the office. I read a lot. So from 7 to uh, about uh, 9, I would read uh, whether it's books, reports, uh, statistics, whatever it is. And then I start with having, you know, a deep focused work. Uh, so it's office work until 2 p.m. And then out of, you know, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., it's meeting time, right? And it's the same every single day. Uh, I'm not going to cafes and restaurants and not laying on the beach. Uh, so what I do after 6 p.m., I come back to office. Uh, because there's a lot of, you know, email work, uh, all of the admin stuff that entrepreneurs still, they have to do it. Uh, what I do from six to eight, I think that that's what it is, right? All the boring stuff that people don't talk about. And then I go back to home, I read and I go to sleep. So that's, that's the, my day, how it looks like. I'm exhausted just hearing about it. I know that some exactly. <laughs> entrepreneurs, when they first become an entrepreneur, one of the biggest challenges they face is wearing all the different hats that are required to have an organization running smoothly and obviously profitably. What would you say was your biggest struggle going from maybe employment to becoming self-employed? Uh, yeah, it's, it might sound very strange, but I was never employed. Uh, straight after the university, I, um, yes, I went on the sales job, uh, but the sales job was like commission based and I was never felt, I was never feeling the, the fact that I was employed by someone. So I was, if I was making money, it was because I was making sales that, that, that was, I was never on the, why I'm saying that because I was never on the fixed pay. Uh, I was never had this pleasure to, you know, receive a, a salary every month and be uh, comfortable. So for me, there was no, not such a you know, transition from a paycheck every month to something where I have to you know, hustle to, to uh, earn my own money and eat. Uh, and uh, to reply to your question, I think, yes, as an entrepreneur, you have to wear all different hats. Uh, and uh, for you know, one or two or three years, that's what, this is what you have to do. And I think this is the beauty. I don't consider it as you know, something that you should be focusing how to not to do it or how to do it more efficiently. I don't think like that. I think it's, this is the beauty of you doing everything and understanding how the business works from every single perspective. Because when you grow, you really uh, can leverage that knowledge and you can really, uh, you know, team will uh, basically respect you more and you will have more power to, you know, employ the right people. Uh, which comes from doing all different things uh, when you're starting out. So great to hear you saying this. I do want to ask, though, because in hearing what you're saying about going from a commission-based um, job to being an entrepreneur, you were always used to, you were very accustomed to 
working and, and hustling to get those sales. But how important was the brand for you? Because going from a company that already has a very established brand to becoming an entrepreneur and creating a brand, there must obviously be challenges. You could be working hard. And I think entrepreneurs generally work really, really hard, but some succeed and some don't. What would you say was the biggest learning for you, not about selling and working and, and being diligent to your work, but about branding and how did you transition from working for a company to working on your own and developing your brand? Very good question. Very good question. I, and I think uh, the answer to that is uh, I was building my brand since the beginning, but it was my personal brand. And I think the um, beauty in Dubai that you have, people don't really care about the brand itself, right? So if you are just a starting entrepreneur and you have built your own brand, people will still buy from you. People will still trust you and people will still do business with you, right? Uh, and it's so easy uh, to build a brand in UAE. Um, maybe something surprising, but it is, you know, I'm comparing, I'm coming from Russia and I'm coming from Europe uh, and bringing all those experiences to build your brand in UAE and to build your connections and to build your network. And uh, I'm huge on networking. I have online courses, workshops. I've written the book on networking. So I think that's the first step that all entrepreneurs, uh, you know, they need to discover it, how to build connections, how to build your own network, because again, this is your brand, right? And maybe your products are not going to be great from the first, you know, from the first try. But who cares if your brand is good, if people trust you, if people really want to do business with you because of who you are. So my, you know, my take on that, build your personal brand uh, and that will pay off whatever you do, whatever products you have, whatever services you have, whatever business you are in. And even if you go back to, I know a lot of people that, you know, ha they have built their personal brand. Uh, they have had their businesses, but something went wrong and they had to close their businesses and they had to go back to, you know, employment, but still they had much bigger salaries because they built their personal brand and because people trusted them uh, in the market. So that, that's my take on that. What an amazingly positive outlook on the journey of an entrepreneur in building that personal brand. Because I, I know that in being an entrepreneur myself, I remember having my consultancy. I remember building that brand. And I remember one of my biggest struggles was the ability to detach what I was selling and who I was as an individual. And I never really understood until several years later that I was my brand. My brand was, was me and people were trusting in me. So it's so good to hear you say this, but my age and your age, huge gap. How did you become so business savvy at such a young age, Vlad? Where on your journey did you learn to be this business savvy? And who did you look to as a role model to get you from where you were as a young teenager to who you are today? Uh, yes, everybody asks me this question and people say I'm uh, ageless. Uh, something that I've heard for the first time about two years ago, what, what did it mean, ageless, you know? People never can say what, at what age I am because of the way, you know, of the way I do business, of the way I uh, perform, of the way that I speak. Uh, answering your question, what age and how did it all start? Uh, I think I've had a pleasure to have a great father uh, who, was, who is an, an entrepreneur and business owner himself, so that was kind of, you know, the first, uh, the first stone uh, in, my, in my education. Uh, then my father was a very, is a very successful uh, gentleman. But when I went to the university, uh, he was only supporting uh, my university fees. He was almost not giving me any money to leave, to uh, eat, to party, nothing like that. So I had to figure out at about, about age... 18, uh, that, okay, I have, you know, uh, a leverage of having a great university, or I have a leverage of studying in a great university. Uh, it's something that, you know, many people dream of, but I don't have any more expenses that I can use from my family or from anybody. So I needed to think how, you know, should I leave 
how should I pay for my own expenses? And this is where it, I think it all started. My first business was, uh, it's, it's interesting to, to go back. My first business was, it was uh, kind of, how can I, how can I say it? So there was uh, in um, parks, you know, when you, when you go to parks, you have a lot of, uh, how do you say, attractions? How do you say it? Yeah, is it the correct word? Yeah. So you have a lot of attractions. And one of my businesses was uh, a very small uh, machine like that uh, and was quite unique in the city where I was. So I bought it and I placed it in a couple of parks and uh, I had no idea how to do business. But for me, it was something exciting. So it was that. The beginning was that. And I was, used to go to parks, you know, and I used to uh, stay next to this attraction. Is this how? Attraction? Whatever. Uh, I sound a bit French, I think. <laughs> uh, and I used to, I used to, you know, uh, call people to, to come to me and to uh, basically pay me money uh, on, in those parks. So that's how it all started. And then I went to bars and then restaurants and then events and a, a lot of things were there. But I think that was the beginning. And um, I, was, I used to, to, to make a lot of money uh, in those parks. I used to make like $200 per, uh, per day, per day at age of like 16, 17 years old. Uh, which was a great achievement for me. So yeah, this is how it all started. And then, you know, what I, I recognized is I never studied in school, right? Uh, that not something that, you know, you want me to say in front of students, but I didn't, and I wouldn't lie that I did. I never studied in school. And I think the reason was because I never liked, I never enjoyed it. I never loved, uh, you know, chemistry, physics, all that boring subjects. I never loved them. Uh, but what I did enjoy, sports, right? I didn't enjoy sports. I didn't enjoy art. I didn't enjoy any sub math. I, I loved math. I didn't enjoy any subject where you need to think and when you, where you need to be creative. Uh, but when the university started, I changed my perspective completely because I went into the journey where I loved it. So I um, studied hospitality, restaurant management, hotel management, you know, uh, people see that business as something romantic, something, you know, mysterious. Uh, so I've started studying that. And since university, I didn't miss in, I, even one lesson. I've done all the homeworks. I've, I've been like the best student in the class. Why? Because I loved it so much. And this is where it all started. So after university uh, was restaurant business. Uh, and this is, this is where and how I started basically. Amazing. So I know that after uni, as you said, you, you went into the restaurant business, but then you said you sold it. Why did you sell it? And what made you decide to go into the education industry? Uh, great question. I think for a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, selling something that they've been working uh, for on uh, for you know, a number of years is a tough decision. Uh, and uh, that was a partnership. So the restaurant business was a partnership with my university friend. Uh, it was great. I mean, you know, having a restaurant business, uh, it's always considered as something very, very sexy. But at the end of the day, when you look from the financial perspective, when you look from the growth perspective, it's a very ch challenging business, right? Uh, people that are listening in Dubai, they would really, really know what, you know, uh, what I mean by everybody's offering discounts, everybody is offering offers, everybody, and they don't look uh, what's happening behind uh, the curtain, what's happening with the, you know, I don't want to be too technical, what's happening with, you know, your profits, your margins, what's happening with your cash flow when you do offer, you know, those huge discounts, it's not healthy for the business, it's not healthy for your growth, and it's also very, very limiting. So what I mean by limiting, when you have a restaurant, right, just imagine any restaurant that you know in the city, let's say Dubai Marina, right, uh, Buddha Bar, right, many people know Buddha Bar. So Buddha Bar is not a good example, okay, uh, any other restaurant that is smaller, right, let's say Yosu, Yosu, Yosushi, right, if you only have Yosushi uh, in Dubai Marina, the only people that will come to your place are people that live in Dubai Marina. Maybe some people in GLT and GBR, maybe, right? But there is no one gonna be coming from Business Bay, right? Or DIFC or Jebel Ali or Abu Dhabi or Sharjah. You, no matter how much you work, no matter how much effort you put in into the business, you're not gonna have the growth that you want. 
right? And this is what I faced exactly. So I, I was very ambitious uh, in terms of, you know, how I want to manage my business, how I want to grow my business. Uh, and there was a limit. There was always a limit. So I was doing everything I could possibly do, but there was a limit of how many people I can get to my place, right? There was a limit of how many, uh, you know, uh, we, we call it turnovers I can do in my restaurant, right? Uh, there was always a limit. And this is what I hated in the restaurant business. First, low margins. You know, we're talking, we're talking about 15% of margins in the restaurant business, which doesn't really give you enough cash to grow the business, number one. And number two is very limited. So if you have high ambitions, right? If you are dreaming a lot, a lot about having uh, multi-million businesses, I don't think restaurant business is for you. Involves high uh, capital involvement, right? Uh, and then you're limited. So that was my point when I said, okay, I wanna grow. I wanna have a business that can serve people in Saudi, in Dubai, in UAE, in, you know, in India, in US, in Australia, in UK, uh, there's no way I can do it with, with a restaurant business, right? At least with, with not uh, such a short amount of time as I wanted. So this is when I decided to you know, sell it uh, and uh, it wasn't profitable, it wasn't paying off and uh, it was something that was limiting me, my partner and everybody. So this one, we decided to sell it. And this one, the next step was, okay, I want a business that would be, uh, you know, that I would be able to operate everywhere in the world, no matter where I am, right? And this is where I've chosen education, number one, uh, marketing, number two, uh, you know, and IT, number three. And this is where I'm kind of developing my, uh, myself right now in those three industries, because there is no limit and you can literally grow within, you know, within a couple of years period. Incredible. Your take on growth and business is definitely going to be very inspiring for any young person listening to this. And I think any entrepreneur listening to this has a lot to grow and, and gain from your knowledge as well. I know that your top three tips for a young person is number one, you know, try and experience as much as possible. Number two, if you're going to do something, you said do 120% of the effort. Don't, you know, don't play small. And number three is quite interesting. And I know that any parents or educators listening right now might not agree, but you say don't listen to society and, and really follow <laughs> what you think. Why would you encourage young people to go with the flow and not listen to society? Why do you think that is important for them? Uh, and I, I'm so happy that you brought it up because I remember I'm going to tell my story when, when I was graduating and I was, was final day of graduation and I was sitting in the, you know, in the huge conference hall with 2000 other students, uh, all excited to, you know, go up on stage to receive the diploma uh, this is what we have been waiting for. And I was sitting there, I was kind of happy uh, and kind of, kind of feeling comfortable with the way that, okay, that's, that's happening, that's great, you know, I'm, I'm excited. Finally, I would be able to do what I want. But on the other hand, I was sitting there, I'm like, I was so nervous. And why I was so nervous is because I didn't get a job before my graduation. And that was pressing me down a lot. Uh, and you know, at that moment, I couldn't recognize why I was so nervous and why not having a job was such a precious moment for me. But about a month passed, uh, you know, about a month after the graduation, I started to think back and I was like, wait a minute, you know, university, everything that I could hear uh, it was for the past at least six or seven months is you need to get a job. You need to get a job. Once you graduate, you need to get a job. Every lesson we go to, every, you know, if you don't pass your exam, you need to get, you, you need to pass your exam to get a job. You need to do that to get a job. And it was like a programming for me that I need to get a job. But I recognized at the moment, like, do I really need to get a job? Or it's because they want their rankings to be higher. If I get a job, obviously university is going to benefit from that, right? If I get a job, if I get a, if I get to the great university after school, who is going to benefit from that? The school, right? And this is the reason they're telling us, and this is my pure opinion, right? I don't want to offend anybody, uh, especially educators. Um, school is always telling you, you need to pass exams to great, to get to the great university. University is always telling you, you need to get you know, good grades or whatever to get to a job, to, to a job that you want. Uh, and finally, f f uh, finally, and funny enough, 
Uh, I've been the best student in the classroom and I didn't get a job for about four uh, months, right? I've had the best grades. I've done a lot of experience, work experience. I've, uh, I was everywhere, basically. I did, you know, WSAT, which is like wine qualification, alcohol qualification, if you want to be um, uh, sommelier. So I've done a lot, a lot of things during my, you know, four years of studying. And for me, it was a surprise. How come? I've got the best grades. I've done so much work. And now nobody wants to hire me, right? And for me, I think that was the, 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 the eye-opening moment. I was like, maybe I don't need to get a job. Maybe that's not for me, right? Uh, and I got a visa, and that's what I didn't tell anyone so far, but I'm going to tell her now. I got a, I've got a job in U.S., finally, right? After like three months after my graduation, I was applying every single day. I got a job in U.S. It was a job that I wanted. Uh, it was in Las Vegas. So for the, bo for the young boy to get a job in Las Vegas, it's something super cool, right? Um, I got a job. I didn't get a visa for the first time. And then they told me, okay, you need to reapply for a visa in like about three months. Uh, and then I came to Dubai, right? Because like my, my dad was here. I came to Dubai to spend time with him. And I started working as a salesperson. I started, you know, building my network basically. And then I got the visa for the second time. But I used to say that I, I didn't get. I got the visa for the second time. No one knows about it, by the way. But I decided not to go to you ask because I didn't feel it was probably, I didn't, I didn't feel it was me. I didn't feel I wanted that job. Right. I felt like what I was doing, you know, uh, just, just going around the city, building my network, trying to find business ideas, trying to find partners, trying to find where I can earn money. That was more of me than going to ask to Las Vegas because it was something cool because it was something sexy. Uh, you know, and, and I didn't go, right? And, and that was uh, a very good lesson for me that if I would go, I would never be where I am right now, right? And again, I would have go uh, there because of the society telling me that I need to get a job because my friends were telling me, oh, how cool it is to get a job in Las Vegas because everybody was telling me, you know, my mom, whatever, just go, I'll, you ask, it's something, it's, it's a great opportunity. I didn't. Right. I didn't listen. I didn't go. And I'm happy that I didn't. I hope that explains. I'm hearing you say you followed your experience. You adapted to the change and you reflected on what you wanted. And all of a sudden that opportunity just didn't fit what you were wanting in your career. That's that's amazing. I know that you believe that people can change their way very quickly. So something like the story you just shared with us. And that you believe that young people shouldn't be afraid of making choices. What does that mean exactly? Uh, if, I can, if I can, you know, uh, really pr push on something, it would be that. You know, because if I take my uh, life experience and if I see people that are succeeding in life, uh, if we analyze them, because I do it all, all the time, I analyze people that are succeeding in life. I look back at my experiences as well. Um, to change your field, to change the career, to change your company, to change what you do, to change your city, to change your country, to change anything, right? Your birth, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your wife. Your, I mean, like right now, at the moment that we live in, to make that change is super, super simple, right? It's super, super simple. And there are all the resources that you need to do that change. So what I mean is me graduating from a hospitality industry, right? Uh, from hospitality university, I mean, going into hospitality industry, going from first to sales, right? I was selling air purifiers, something that I hated every single day. I was, I was selling air purifiers, then going from air purifiers to the restaurant business, finally, something that I loved, but I had no idea, you know, how that change would be. Then going from a restaurant business to a catering business, because after restaurant business was a catering business, right? Had no idea what the catering business is. And going from the catering business to education business, and then from education business to marketing business, right? Uh, it was like four or five switches of the industries and businesses and all of that within, you know, four years or five years of my life. And, uh, you know, and at every stage of my change, of my experience, I was doing better than a lot of other players on the market. 
So this brings me to a point that you don't need to be afraid of the change, right? Only if, you know, what the point I mentioned before, only if you go, if you go 120% with the change, right? You are not like, you know, and that's something might be uh, as well controversial, contradictional, whatever, uh, to other people. If you say, I want to start a business, and you are still, you know, uh, and you're only doing business for one hour a day or one hour a week, it's never going to happen, right? That, that just means that you're afraid of starting a business, right? Or maybe if you say, oh, I'm going to change the job, but I'm going to stay in the same um, industry, uh, despite the fact that I hate this industry, I hate the boss, but I'm going to try, you know, one more time. So that's not what changing means, right? Changing means, you know, I like uh, drawing, I like singing, I like whatever. So I might leave, you know, in my parents house for the next three years. But who cares, right? If I do every day, and that's, that's how I started, you know, I started with living with my dad. Uh, but I had to start like that, because what I was doing was not bringing me money, right? I could get a job, you know, I could get a job. And, and still right now, you know, I get a lot of offers. Uh, it's interesting when, when you become the business owner, and when you do something very, um, I would say, something that performs great uh, in the industry, uh, you're going to see, you know, if, if you're a young entrepreneur, if you're a young uh, student that, are start, that, are, that is starting out, you're going to see that once you get into entrepreneurship, a lot of people will start recognizing you and a lot of people will start offering you the job, right? Uh, a lot of people will start offering you salaries that you have never dreamed of. Uh, despite the fact, you know, that you might be earning much less with your own business. Uh, that's something that I discovered myself. But to summarize all of that, you know, uh, with the resources, with the free tools, with the free access to network, with the free access to, you know, there's a lot of things that UAE offers us that we uh, don't really recognize. Uh, a lot of places that you can go for free and work there. A lot of co-working spaces that you can go for free and work there. A lot of mentors that you can, you know, uh, get access to a lot of successful people that you can get access to. Uh, so the question when you change your career or the question when you go through a transition from the job to entrepreneurship or from one job to another job, uh, the question is only about you, right? It's not about how easy it is or is there, you know, is there resources or is there really money or is there anything like it's only about your decision uh, to make the step forward, right? And when you make the step forward, make it 120%, right? If you say, okay, I'm now businessman, I'm now uh, entrepreneur, that's it. That's what you do 24 seven, you only do that and that, and this is what, you know, uh, will, always, will always bring you uh, what you want. Lastly, I've never been in my life at the point where, you know, I was, if I was doing something for 120%, I was never uh, at the point where I didn't have money. That might sound interesting, you know, and a lot of people are scared because, you know, running a business, it's a risky thing. Uh, you have to pay salaries, you have to pay your own expenses, you have to pay a lot of things. But when you go 120%, and even if you get to the point where you think like, oh, this is like my last savings, this is like last thing that I have to put in. After that, I'm going to go broke, right? Uh, at that moment, something will happen. You get one customer, two clients, or you get the investment, or you get something else, or you get the connection that will introduce you to someone else. So all, all the time, when you only put 120%, you know, every time it's going to happen that you might be on the line of, you know, being broke, but you're not going to be because at, at a point, something is going to happen for you that will help you basically to, uh, to, to proceed and to stay alive. Very motivational, very motivational. I'm taking away work hard, stay focused, be driven, and trust in yourself, in your skills, and in what you want to be doing. Such an interesting conversation with you. Thank you so much, Vlad. It is really interesting to hear your take on business, the realities of being an entrepreneur, and hearing about your journey. And although it, it, it is very interesting and very exciting, I like how you remind young people, you know, you have to put in the effort. You can't just kind of sit on the ride. It's about working and working with focus. 
And that brings us to the end of another amazing interview. Today we met with Vlad Cherney, and he is the head of growth at Upgrade Digital. Thank you everybody for watching. Thank you, Vlad, for joining us. And I look forward to seeing you all at our next Desk Careers Digital Spotlight.